Chairman of the museum just means that I've been here the longest, but Jim Bertoli and Donna Bertoli welcomed me when I came in the middle 80s or later 80s uh, to see what was being done at Millville Airport, uh, which I've now become a uh, mission of my uh, life to also preserve uh, the history that's there. Uh, history sheet made up probably by Donna, a couple of things I'll mention. Why do we think it's important? Why are we putting this effort into preserving Millville Airport? So in uh, 1939, uh, the reason that spot was picked, it was the Millville Flying Club. Uh, some young guys, uh, led by Nate, Nathan Ruggaboy, had airplanes and wanted to fly and wanted to have fun. And they got convinced the city that this area was appropriate. So they made initial air runways. That wasn't enough for the military, but uh, remember where we were. So the dedication was six months before Pearl Harbor. So the government started to think in 1940, German forces had conquered most of Europe and Japanese forces were threatening to take all of Asia. So the fear of direct aggression against the United States from the Atlantic Ocean on the East Coast and also the West Coast, uh, sparked the United States to order defense airports to be built all around the country. So in uh, the Millville Airport, two 5,000 foot concrete runways and one hangar were funded in 1941, very early, uh, before Pearl Harbor, by the Civil Aviation Administration to later become Dave's boss, the Federal Aviation Administration, uh, to be used by local civilians until it was needed by the United States Army. So ahead of entering World War II, we started thinking, preparing for, for, to, to defend our nation. So on August 2nd, 1941, a full six months before Pearl Harbor, Millville Airport was dedicated by the U.S. War Department as the nation's first defense airfield. So that's and the reason why, and, and we were just in a conversation, mentioned Leon Henderson was a part of Roosevelt's cabinet, uh, was a person from Millville uh, in the aviation uh, authority of the government, which led him to know where the site was. Uh, so Millville got uh, picked when they started building the defense airfields. Now the 75 years, uh, in May of 1942, the 59th Fighter Squadron of the 33rd Fighter Group visited for about three weeks of training. So we started using it as a World War II prep area in 1942, 75 years ago. In September of 42, construction of the first cinder block buildings was started and by November, several dozen were completed. And then the following January, a convoy from Langley Field, Virginia, came in to begin training at the Millville Airfield. Okay. Still very early in the war. Uh, the Millville Airfield starting out the fence airport because of our location, uh, where we are in terms of the Delaware River, the Atlantic Ocean, uh, protecting uh, Philadelphia, the Navy Yard, the DuPont Company, uh, strategically lo located uh, for defense, uh, but fairly quickly turned into training of pilots for combat. First with the P-40s, with the first airplane that came in. Uh, so Millville became a uh, advanced fighter training center. Uh, and all around Millville, farmers were asked to leave because we need your property. Uh, and that we had targets of wooden full-scale models of ships, bridges, tanks, trucks, air, uh, railroad cars. Uh, pilots also fired on tow targets, which we still have in the museum if you'll visit us, uh, with actual bullet holes still in them. Uh, they were uh, two gunnery aerial uh, ranges along the Atlantic coast between Atlantic City and Wildwood. Okay, so they one plane pulled targets. You hope these young guys would not hit the plane and hit the target. They colored their bullets so they could bragging rights of if that was their bullets, it actually hit the target and didn't miss. Uh, Millville, uh, then as the war progressed, group after group came through, 
mostly went directly to combat in Europe from Millville. Uh, the Millville became the advanced fighter training center for the P-47 Thunderbolt aircraft, which is the net as, the, as through the war, uh, the uh, advancement in aircraft uh, capability. Uh, you know, the whole country was uh, building as quickly as uh, they could to, for the war. So more than 1,500 fighter pilots trained at Millville. And many of their names on our board, on our uh, uh, pilots who trained and, and military people who came through the airfield. Nearly 10,000 men and women uh, from all over the uh, United States served here in numerous capacities.